What if we told you that while humans were busy creating indestructible plastic, the planet quietly evolved something that could eat it? Plastic was one of humanity's greatest triumphs of chemistry. Cheap, strong and nearly impossible to break down, it became the backbone of convenience, innovation, even medicine. Today it wraps our food, coats our tools and fills every corner of modern life. But that very indestructibility has become its greatest curse. Plastics now clog our oceans, poison ecosystems and pile up in landfills that will outlast our civilizations. It's the kind of unintended consequence that exposes the limits of human foresight. We made the miracle material, but we didn't make the plan to unmake it. And then nature stepped in. In recent weeks, scientists discovered something quietly astonishing a hospital-associated microbe capable of digesting medical-grade plastic, not just surviving alongside it, but breaking it down. The question this raises is almost uncomfortable. We made the plastic, but we didn't make the microbe. Nature did. And not over millennia, but within decades. So, what are we to make of that? The microbe wasn't designed in a lab. It evolved, likely in hospitals, where synthetic materials are everywhere and bacteria are constantly competing to adapt or die. In that environment, natural selection did what it does best. A mutation here, a gene transfer there, a new function. And suddenly there it was, an organism that could do what no engineer had yet accomplished, consume the waste of our own invention. This is the planet's intelligence. Not a thinking mind like ours, but a system that responds, adapts, and transforms. A self-correcting loop. A kind of distributed wisdom that doesn't innovate in a straight line, but always finds a way forward. What happened with this microbe is more than a curiosity. It's a parable. A reminder that our intelligence, strategic, inventive, fast, is also prone to blind spots. We solve problems by breaking things down, extracting resources, optimizing for immediate gain. Nature solves problems by staying in balance, by evolving within limits, by weaving solutions out of the very mess we create. And when we create a crisis, like plastic pollution, sometimes nature quietly responds with a fix we didn't ask for, but desperately need. Which leads to an uncomfortable, essential question. If human intelligence created the problem and nature evolved the solution, which kind of intelligence is more effective? We like to think we're the smartest system on the planet, but maybe Earth itself, through its fungi, its microbes, its ecosystems, is showing us a different kind of genius. One that doesn't rely on domination or design, but on responsiveness and resilience. If that's true, then our role isn't to rule over nature, but to learn from it. To stop treating the Earth as a machine we control and start recognizing it as a living system, one we barely understand. It's tempting to see the emergence of a plastic-eating bacterium as the planet bailing us out, but we should be careful. Nature adapts to survive, not to save us. If we're lucky, those goals align for a while, but if they don't, nature will go on evolving without us. Still, there's hope in this story. Hope that the world is more resilient than we feared. Hope that the solutions we need may not always come from our own minds, but from the soil, the sea, and the cell. Hope that if we pay attention, we might start to understand not just the damage we cause, but the deeper intelligence we live inside of. And that maybe, just maybe, we're not the only smart thing on this planet. To stay updated on the latest science and technology news, subscribe to Breaking Through News on the Newsbreak app or at breakingthrough.com.